If you hate shopping or have a hard time finding what you're looking for, stay tuned. In today's video, I'm going to share some strategies on making you a more effective shopper and eliminating the stress when you're shopping. Hey, this is Netta. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my whole goal for this channel is to help you build a wardrobe and a style that you love so that you can look beautiful and feel confident every single day. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please hit the subscribe button. It's free and we get into a lot of your questions and challenges and getting dressed over 40, over 50 um, in these videos. So I hope you enjoy this topic because this is a doozy. This is something that I get asked about a lot. So because it's Tuesday, it's Angel style show time. So if you don't know, Tuesday's format for my YouTube videos is something I call the Angel style show. I feature a little makeover segment. I feature something that I love every week and um, I answer a question as well as getting into a topic that is relevant to your style. So today I'm going to start by doing a little mini makeover on basics. One of the things that I get asked a lot is, um, or I hear a lot is, you know, my wardrobe is so boring. I wear t-shirt and shorts every day. I wear t-shirt and jeans every day. I wear, I'm just, I just wear the basics. I spent years in t-shirts and jeans and now I want to know how to mix up my wardrobe a little and make it more stylish. So if you have a uniform that you find boring, I'm going to give you a couple of strategies for taking that uniform and elevating it without completely starting over with a fresh new wardrobe, really working with the pieces you have and making them more interesting, making them more exciting. So I'm going to start with the most basic of basic of basic uniforms and that's a t-shirt and Jeans, right? What could get more basic than a plain solid t-shirt and jeans? I know that many of you find yourself in, in a similar uniform or a similar neutral head to toe look like this every single day. So what would you do to this basic look that's going to keep it casual but make it more interesting? The first thing I would do is make sure you've got a couple of neutral um, casual jackets that you can pair with any of your your basic outfits to make them more interesting so a neutral jacket like a little utility jacket like this added on top of the t-shirt instantly adds a little bit of style adds a little bit of interest the next thing I would do is add accessories so a lot of times we're wearing our basic everyday accessories and not thinking about maybe that some outfits are going to require a little more accessorizing than others for example the outfit I'm wearing right now it's pretty pretty statement making there's a lot going on in the outfit so I could keep my accessories pretty subtle but if you've got a really subtle outfit like this you might want to amp up your accessories a little make them a little more interesting make them a little bit more noticeable so that you bring style to an otherwise very simple outfit okay so adding a jacket adding um, a necklace um, then you're going to, to think about your footwear of course so there are a couple of directions that you can go in here you can go with the basic white sneaker that I say that everybody really needs and this is more of a white sport shoe white um, fashion sneaker than it is a running shoe. So that would be the first suggestion. If you're doing a t-shirt and jeans and you're wearing a running shoe, you're going to feel a little, a little too casual, maybe a little bit underdressed for wherever you're going. But if you add a more fashion white sneaker, still super comfortable, but um, a little bit of a sleeker look, then you're going to feel a little bit more polished. So the green jacket or the utility jacket or whatever casual jacket you choose, a necklace and a white sneaker is the first way to elevate this look from very basic to a little bit more um, stylish. Then you want to take it up a notch a little bit more, then you can dress it up and switch out the casual jacket and add a blazer and then switch out the sneakers and add a pair of pumps. So, or a pair of pretty flats. This um, is the Van Ellie um, kind of dupe on the Chanel pump, the, the little cap toe style that is everywhere. It's classic, but also really comfortable. This is a very wearable heel height. So just adding a little blazer in a neutral color and a pretty flat or pretty pump is going to take it to the next level. Um, if you still want it to be casual, of course you can mix up the types of sneakers and the types of footwear that you wear. You could add, um, for example, a colorful shoe with, or a colorful sneaker with the white t-shirt and blue jeans and it's going to look so different and so cool and kind of intentional. You can add a colorful loafer with the white t-shirt and jeans and, and still get a different and more elevated look. So really thinking how you can wear your accessories in unexpected ways. A lot of times we think, 
I always wear athletic shoes with, with jeans, or I always wear um, flat sandals with shorts, or you know flip-flops with shorts. Whatever your go-to is, looking at your accessories, grabbing pieces you might not otherwise reach for, to accessorize your casual outfits can be a great way of reinventing your everyday pieces and making them look and feel more interesting and more relevant. So adding those jackets, adding shoes that are a little bit unexpected, a little bit cool, um, and can elevate your everyday basics. So let me know what you, what you think of this in the comments and what your everyday basics are. Are you like most Floridians wearing t-shirts and shorts every day? Are you more a sweatshirt and jeans kind of girl? Let me know in the comments and how you want to um, try one of these strategies to reinvent your everyday outfits. Okay, the next segment in my Ageless Style show is the buzzworthy pick. Now, this is not something that is contemporary and just came out and that you've never heard of, but it's something that I'm obsessed with nonetheless, and it is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. I buy it in this big tub. It's 14 ounce, 16 ounces. I can't read without my glasses. Um, it's 16 ounces. It is dense. It is just this very, very gentle cream that, and, and very moisturizing, very emollient. And um, I think this big tub was only $15 for the 16 ounces. And I've had this for so long and I use it daily and it's still, uh, I still have so much left. So it's a great value, but it's also great for those of you with sensitive skin. My skin is not sensitive. My skin is combination and it's always been pretty tough, but there are days when I feel like my skin is a little more sensitized than other days. Like last night was one of those days. Um, when I got out of my uh, shower last night or my bath, I my skin felt dry and it felt a little touchy. So I put this on um, and this was early. I took my bath at like 5 30, 6 o'clock because it was just one of those days and I just wanted to get comfy. And so a lot of times I will do my evening routine earlier so I'm not too tired to do it later. So I got out of my bath and I slathered this on. I put it on from here to my feet. And um, what was amazing is that my skin just sucked it up. And like I said, my skin is combination. It's not even that dry. But within half an hour, my, like there was no greasiness. There was no um, residue left on my skin. My skin just soaked it in. And so when I applied my uh, retinoid product later, I had a buffer between my skin and that more active ingredient, that, that retinoid product. So sometimes if you find retinoids or retinols or whatever, active ingredients you're using on your face at night a little sensitizing you can try this trick and put a, a really rich emollient moisturizer on your skin give it plenty of time to soak in and then apply that um product on top. Yes, it's, it is definitely going to be buffered by it. And so it's not going to be quite as, 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 um, potent, but if you need, if you, if you're working up to using a, a more active ingredient and it's, it's making your skin a little irritable, this could be a great strategy in the meantime, or just like me on those days, occasionally when your skin is just feeling a little bit out of sorts. And so I love CeraVe. It's tried and true. It works for everybody. It works for all skin types. It does not make you break out. It, um, it, it's super, super hydrating, super soothing, and I highly recommend it. Okay, the next segment in my Ageless Style show is the question. This is more of a comment than a question, but it's going to lead, I think, nicely into today's topic, so I'm excited to share it with you. This is from Jean. She said, I've been following you on YouTube for about a year. Thank you, Jean. So I've been on YouTube about a year and almost a year and a half. Um, being 70 plus, I came of age when companies had dress codes, then came dress for success. Living in Wisconsin, some of your comments aren't as applicable as they are to a Floridian, I'm sure that's true, but that's okay. I particularly enjoyed shopping your own closet and travel packing. I'm also buying a gray handbag, yay! Um, you appeal to every price point, not favoring a particular brand or store. I can find a stylist at most any department store, but they're out to sell their products. Okay, so yes, it is very different working with somebody um, who's a personal stylist rather than working with somebody who works at a store because 
of course, they're only going to be able to offer you their selection of items, right? So um, I'm, I'm trying to give you a broad sense of what's out there, not a specific, you know, store, store by store sense of what's out there. So um, thank you so much for your comment, Jean. It means a lot to me. And, you know, I, I can see that Jean probably struggles a little bit with, with finding what she's looking for when she's going shopping. If she's saying she's going to stores and she feels like they're out to sell her what they've got in their stores, I will tell you a, a lot of women experience that. And I, I love a good um, salesperson, a good consultant at a department store. They can be your best friend if you know what you're looking for. So in today's video, I'm gonna share some strategies on how to shop more successfully and how to shop if you hate to shop. And that's the topic of today's video. What do you do if you hate to shop? Or if you find shopping a chore, a struggle, if you find it hard to find what you're looking for, I'm gonna share some ideas that I hope will help. Okay, the first strategy on what to do if you hate to shop is to, to do your research. Before you can go into a store, you need to know what the stores in your area currently have. So hop online, like I love to check out what our local Dillard's has, what local Target has, what our local um, uh, Walmart has, wherever you're going shopping, check and see what your local stores have. Most websites, whether it's Nordstrom or Macy's or Dillard's or Target, um, you can filter by location and you can see what's currently available in your local store. For example, I've said this before, um, walmart.com, you know, a lot of people have done lots of videos with cute clothes from Walmart. We don't have those clothes at our local Walmart. So if I went in looking for them, I would be disappointed. But if I had filtered by store, I know what our local Walmart has. I know that they don't have that selection, so then I might consider shopping online, for example. Um, or if you're going to Dillard's, um, you know, different Dillard stores will carry different assortments and different brands. So filtering by your local store is really important. Doing your research, knowing ahead of time, if you're going to, for example, buy a pair of sneakers, you need to know that you're probably going to want to go to um, a sneaker store, a store that specializes in sneakers rather than maybe a department store. So knowing what you're looking for and where you're most likely to find it is going to save you some legwork, right? A lot of times people will go in like my I've told the story, I went shopping with my aunt. We were looking for a black top and she really wanted to go to Target because it was close. And I said, you know, it's midsummer. Target is probably not going to have a black blouse in midsummer. And we were right. Target did not have a black blouse in midsummer, at least not, not the style that she was looking for. So doing a little legwork in advance can really help. Okay, the next thing is to go with a list. In the same way that we don't go to a grocery store without a shopping list, I hope, um, because if we do, we're gonna end up with like Oreos. Um, but if go with a list when you're going into a department store. I know a lot of women get overwhelmed and daunted when they go into a store and they see a thousand million, quadrillion, bajillion, lots and lots and lots of things to choose from. And it's overwhelming. If you go in with a list and you know what you're looking for, three, four, five, five items that you know what you're looking for, it can be very, very um, easy to go in and do a quick assessment and, and, and quickly figure out whether they have what you're looking for. So for example, you're going in and you're looking for uh, black jeans, a white top, and a red dress then you can you can go in and and immediately you know scour the the racks and the aisles and decide whether there is hope for those items at that at the store that you're at hopefully you've done some research and you know that what departments you can go to so you know that there's a red dress at Vince Camuto at Dillard so you're going to go there you know there's black jeans at you know whatever Joe's so you're going to go there and so you you've got um a hit list and departments that you can go to that you know are going to be more likely to have the items that you're looking for if you go into a store assuming that the right items are just going to fall down on you from heaven and you're going to you know go into a dressing room and all the clothes are going to be there and you're just going to try them on um, that's actually what I do with clients I, I I stock the dressing room so they don't have to look around but if you go in and you don't have a plan um, and you're just waiting for the right outfit to magically jump on your body or 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 um, wind up at the cashier so that you can check it out or whatever it's not going to happen so you need to know where you're going to in the store and specifically the items that you're looking for um, you want to be focused when you're looking for those items, but you want to be flexible. So for example, if you go in and you're like, I need a black top for work and you have a specific black top in mind, but 
if you stay a little open and you know you know that it's a black top that you're looking for and you know that you need it for work so you've got those parameters in place you might find that a, a beautiful black top that's nothing like you imagined because you can't picture everything that's going to be in the store maybe you're looking for white or a black silky button down and instead you see a black lacy blouse um, lace trimmed blouse and you're like this would be perfect and I didn't even think of it so being focused and flexible I talk about this all the time um, is is critical when shopping because it, it takes out some of the frustration and it allows you to find things that you might not have otherwise considered Okay, the next thing is to um, set a timer. So if you really, really hate to shop, um, I, I, I've, I shop with a daughter who really hates to shop and she wants to know when we're getting out. So if you wanna know when you're getting out, say you're entering the mall at 11 a.m., make an appointment at 12.30 p.m. to get your nails done or a lunch date or a coffee date. That was going to be you know, my, uh, one of my future tips but to reward yourself. But just set, set a time limit um, or set something on your phone and say, you know something, I, I really only have it in me today to, to try on jeans for an hour. I'm gonna set the timer for an hour Hour, and when that hour is done, I'm going to leave whether or not I found what I'm looking for and I will come back next time. So maybe the next time you're not so um, much dreading the experience of shopping because you know you're only going to have to do it for a short period of time. So for those of you who really hate to shop, make it short in and out whether or not you found the item. Um, know that you've, you know, you've got another shopping trip coming up and you can find it next time. Sometimes we just will we'll stay way, way, way past our frustration point and then we buy something that we don't really love because we just want to find that thing and we want it to be over with we want the shopping to be done right and the shopping before the frustration okay the next thing is to get help now i know that gene alluded to salespeople sometimes just wanting to sell you their stuff but that often happens when we don't have a plan and we don't have a list but if you enlist a salesperson, a trusted salesperson, ask around, um, ask your friends. I know at our local department stores, I love the salespeople at our local Dillard's. They are really, really helpful. They know their merchandise a lot better than you do and they can really, really help. A friend of mine walked into Buckle with her beautiful teenage daughter and ended up walking out with her whole back to school wardrobe because of a really great salesperson. If you know what you're looking for, if you've got a plan, if you can go in and, and, and go up to that salesperson that has been there for a while, that knows their stuff, that knows what, what is, is currently working and fitting people in the store from their selection, and you can say, you know, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. They can help you find X, Y, and Z. They can help you get different sizes. They can help you find what you're looking for with minimal effort. For example, um, our Dillard's has you know two two stories and I remember going in and they had just reorganized um, the Dillard's and I was looking for black pants for a client I went to the, the salesperson uh, that I was working with and that I've worked with in the past and I said you know what happened to all of the you know Michael Kors and Calvin Klein black pants that were down here and she said oh those are all up so if I had not asked her I would have spent a lot of time downstairs looking for something that was really on another level so enlist the help of a trusted salesperson and make them your ally tell them what you're looking for tell them that you're working on your wardrobe tell them that you're building your style they can let you know when sales come up they can let you know when things come in in your size they can really be your local fashion best friend I want to be your national fashion best friend but they can really really be an ally for you um, at your local store okay the next thing is to prepare to not find what you want I alluded to that sometimes you have to leave without what you're looking for a lot of times, um, there, there's a lot in stores right now that's hard to wear and that can be not flattering. And so if you go in saying, I'm for sure definitely 100% going to find my dream dress in the next 45 minutes at the one store that I'm going to, you're setting yourself up for possible disappointment. If you go in and say, you know something, I'm gonna see what I can find. Hopefully there's something here for me, but if not, I'm prepared to walk away. Know that often we go, if, especially if you're, if you're focused and targeted and you're looking for something specific, it may not be at the store at the time that you go to look for it. Um, you might be looking for white jeans in October and there just aren't any in stores or whatever that may be. So prepare yourself to know that, you know, you're going to just spend that, that allocated amount of time um, at the store looking for what you want to find and that you may not find it and that's okay um, you can go back you can keep looking online you can you can you know try again later but again don't settle just because you didn't find what you were looking for 
be focused but flexible um try on a lot try on a lot so um i went shopping with a family member recently and she was uh, just daunted by the amount of stuff I put in the dressing room for her. When you're, especially if you've transitioned to a different size, if you're in a different lifestyle, if you're trying on a different silhouette, something you've never tried on in the past, be prepared to try on a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Make sure you've eat, had something to eat, make sure you've had something to drink, make sure you're rested, make sure you're wearing things that are comfortable for, for trying on, bring a lot of things into the dressing room and try on a lot of clothes. You're not going to know what works and what doesn't if you're not trying on and most of us have to try on multiple items to get something that works something that fits so be prepared to try on and don't think it's outside of the norm don't think that everybody else in the world is putting on three pairs of jeans and and, and buying all three because they all fit and you have to try on 20 pairs to find one that fits Everybody in the world has to try on multiples, especially if hard to find or hard to fit items like jeans, like pants, like dresses. If something is harder for you to fit, if you're especially if you're outside of the normal, you know, a, a typical size range, you're petite, you're plus, you're tall, know that you're going to have to try on a lot. Go into it with that understanding. Go into it with the understanding that we all are in the same boat and just give yourself, be patient with yourself and give yourself that time. Um, don't be hard on yourself because clothes don't fit. Clothes don't fit anybody. We all have to try on multiple items. Um, okay, be surprised if it fits, not if it doesn't fit. Um, be surprised if it fits. So this is an extension of what I was saying before. Be surprised if you find something that fits. That should be the surprise. Not that, oh, this doesn't fit and I thought it was going to fit. I only brought in one pair. No, it's less likely to fit you. So if you find something that fits, that should be like a bonus because we're going to try on a lot and most of it is not going to work. So if something fits, that's the surprise and that's the reward. That's what we're going for, of course, and you're gonna get better and better and better at it. But know that most of us are going to have a hard time finding a great fit off the rack and a lot of clothes are going to, for a lot of us, a lot of clothes are gonna to need to be tweaked or altered. So if you find something that fits you right away, that's amazing. Just pat yourself on the back and you can go have that coffee now. Um, most things don't work on most women. So you are not alone. You are the norm. And um, most things are just not going to work on most of us. So knowing that, knowing that going into it can really help ease and alleviate some of your frustration. Make note of what works. So if you're trying on a bunch of stuff, you're going to start seeing patterns. You're going to start seeing that some things are going to work better for you than other things. And you want to know and, and even if you're not going to buy all of those things right now, um, make a note to yourself, wow, I, I'm surprised that wide leg pants work really well on me. I'm surprised that I really prefer the way I look at a sleeve top as opposed to a cap sleeve top. I'm surprised that, etc. Make notes, take pictures, because a picture is worth a thousand words and a thousand notes, but really take note and, and um, make a record of what works for you and what doesn't. Um, and take pictures of anything that you're on the fence about. You're going to regret if you get home later and you're like, I don't remember whether I really like that pair of jeans. Should I go back for that pair of jeans? If you have pictures of everything you've tried on that was at all promising, you can go back, look at that picture, give yourself a few hours, give yourself a little bit of perspective, a, a little bit of time to get a little bit of perspective on it, and look at that on your um, on your you know phone, the picture, and you'll have a lot more information than you would have if you were just trying to remember it, or if you just wrote down, oh, go back for that pair of jeans or whatever. So keep track of what you're what you're trying on, pay it, make note of what works for you and what doesn't. It's going to make your future shopping trips so much easier. Finally, reward yourself. I alluded to this earlier. Um, schedule a coffee date with a friend, go out to lunch, um, get a manicure. When I go shopping with my younger daughter who does not go shopping, we always make sure something fun is built in. Like maybe we grab Starbucks on the way off, you know, on the way um, home, we meet up with a friend at the end, we get um, a smoothie, whatever, whatever we do to give us uh, a light at the end of the, what she thinks is a long, bleak and very dark tunnel. And, uh, so she knows that there's something at the end that she's looking forward to. It helps her power through the shopping. It helps her power through trying on things and trying on shoes and trying on clothes, none of which she enjoys. So 
if you fall into that category and you just can't wait to, to be done with it, set something up at the end that will make you look forward to um, your little reward at the end. Finally, my last tip is as much as I love and value um, in-person shopping, and I think it is the most effective way to shop for clothes by far, especially if you haven't shopped for clothes in a while, you don't know your size, you don't know how the current silhouettes fit you, you don't know what sizes you wear in some of your favorite brands right now, um, shopping in person, there's nothing like it. But um, it can be daunting for a lot of people. So if you really, really, you've tried all of my strategies and you find shopping in, in, in real life to be really stressful and really um, a hassle, then try shopping online. Once you've tried on some things and you have an idea of your size in person, makes it a lot easier to, to go online and find some of those sizes in, in some of those brands because you already know that they're going to work for you. So online shopping makes it easier to filter it makes it easier to search it makes it easier to find exactly what you're looking for you know if you go into a department store and you don't you have no idea where the black tea is it might take you a few minutes to find the black tea but you will be able to try it on but if you're shopping online you can you know search for black tea and you'll find 500 of them right so you know there are pros and cons to each and I want to encourage you to try um, both both types of shopping and and see kind of what works for you and find that balance for you um, I always say that there are a lot of stores where you can shop online and then return in the store if that is something that that appeals to you so I hope that was helpful I know I covered a lot when it comes to shopping and I want to make sure that um, you are comfortable with with the whole process of shopping and that you're armed with the information that you need to the best shopper that you can be. So let me know what you think if, of this video. If, if you love to shop, let me know in the comments if you, if you found these strategies helpful. And if you hate to shop, let me know if maybe some of these are going to help you shop more successfully and less stressfully next time. Love you guys. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. Hit the like button and um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, comment. Love hearing from you and I'll see you in the next one.